Hello, all my friends are synths, and today I wanted to introduce you to my latest and my replacement friends, since I can't have any real life contact with anybody thanks to the coronavirus. For this video, I've decided to blatantly rip off Cuckoo and use a mirror for a second camera instead of actually setting up a second camera because it's a pain in the ass for me to set up a second camera and sync it, but it's definitely not worth it for you just so you can see more of my face. I should say that if throughout the video you hear a strange rustling sound, like there's a vole or something building a nest, my house has not been infested with anything. It's just that my... um. Beard seems to rub against this windshield or pop filter and I can't take it off or, you know, you'll hear I know you're probably thinking that I've just tried to rip off Cuckoo's hair and beard as well but that's not actually the case. It's just that I can't get to a hairdresser and I've basically given up trying at this point. It's been over a year and I'm just going to embrace the look. I'm going to embrace the wild man look. So I, sorry Cuckoo for stealing your mirror idea and the beard hair combination but art is theft after all. Anyway, on to the actual synthesizer itself. I wanted to talk about the cat specifically because this was one of the most interesting monosynths that Beringer brought out for me, at least initially. This was the one I wanted to get. Whilst they've done lots of cool reproductions or reimaginations or whatever you want to call it, this one called out to me because it wasn't, you know, one of these big name synthesizers like a Pro One or, you know, whatever, an OBX or whatever other ones they've made. It was a synth that I hadn't heard of the originating synth or the synth that it was based on. But I, I quite like the fact this is a bit more esoteric and kind of in line with the Wasp. And I think they've done a good job actually of balancing things out, of getting, you know, classic synths that are a bit more unusual with the bigger ones that lots of more people may be interested in as well. If you're just looking for sounds, then I have uploaded a video a few days ago or whenever it is at this point where I just ran through the first collection of sounds that I managed to get out of this when I was just playing about. For that, there's no effects or anything like that. I literally just recorded the first few hours of me playing about with the knobs and sliders and cut it down into some of the more interesting sounds that I got. So I, if you're interested in an idiot who didn't even read a manual and just fiddled about until he could find some stuff, then that video is probably for you and it'll be linked somewhere. To the cat specifically, first of all, to talk about build quality, if you don't know anything about the other mono synths from Beringer, they're all fairly well built, at least in terms of the construction. They're metal, the sides are wood, and I did see somebody or a few people doubting whether this was actually wood or whether it was some kind of plastic. And I can tell you that I'm pretty sure it is wood because I got a second hand one or a, a refurbished Model D and it had like a big chunk out the side and it definitely looked like there was wood under there unless plastic has become remarkably deceptive over the past while. So yeah, it is wood. It might be cheap, crappy, shitty wood, but it's definitely wood. And of course, I'm just waiting for somebody to confirm that it's not wood, it's plastic and, you know, show me up. But that wouldn't be the first time. Specifically with regards to the cat and build quality. Uh, if you're like me, you might have looked at this online and gone, this looks really cool, but are those sliders, like, going to be really crap? Because the way these kind of, I don't know what you call them, or the caps maybe on the sliders, they just looked like they'd be a bit hollow and a bit plasticky and a bit shit, you know, like you get on really cheap toy synths. But actually, I'm quite happily surprised to report that that's not the case. They're actually quite solid and feel quite nice to use. The same goes for the knobs. They look a bit cheap and plasticky online, at least to me, but they're actually good. And like the other uh, monosynths that Beringer have brought out, I've been surprised at the, the resistance of them. They're not kind of, you know, wobbly at all and they don't have like a pure easy turn there is a nice amount of resistance. So any concerns about that, you know, you, there, I don't have any, it's good. So I'm not gonna go into detail on all these sounds or give a tutorial or anything like that because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just gonna tell you some of the things that I think are interesting having played with a bunch of these synths. I haven't used it for a huge amount of time. I don't know anything about the Octave Cat, so I can't give you any comparisons to that. This is just a kind of real life first impression thing there's a few things in particular about this synth that stand out for me, uh, even or especially in comparison, again, to the other monosynths that Beringer have, like the Wasp and, you know, the Model D, etc. And that is that 
there's quite a lot of modulation options. And so what I'm going to do is play a sequence on my SQ-1 and just kind of show you some of this stuff here. I can't really change the sequence, unfortunately, because the SQ-1 is propping up this terrible dusty mirror I've got. So I'm sorry, you're going to hear the same thing over and over until it haunts you in your sleep and you wake up in the middle of the night thinking about it. But before I start the sequence running, basically what I'm going to do is show you the FM or the modulation options where you can modulate the frequency. Because this is something with this that I think sounds really interesting and is different to, definitely different to the other synths that Behringer have brought out their reproductions of. But it's also quite different to other synths that I've used. And I think it's one of the strengths of this, the frequency modulation. You can modulate VCO1 with the output of VCO2. And you can also modulate VCO2 with the output of VCO1. That was quite hard to get right in my head and also in my mouth. The cool thing though is you can also cross modulate. So you can modulate VCO1 with VCO2 and you can modulate VCO2 with VCO1 at the same time. So you get these really interesting complex kind of arrangements or sounds, I guess, timbres, is that the word? There's also sync modes. I think one's hard and one's soft, but it doesn't say in the manual. So nah, I don't know. There are a host of other modulation options as well, but I'm going to show you the FM first because that's most interesting. I'm going to start up the sequence and right now they're not modulating each other at all, but then I'm going to dial it in slowly and explain. It is a wee bit confusing because at first I thought that the modulation for VCO2, you can see here you can choose the different uh, envelope types and the VCO1, maybe you can't see because of where the camera is, but that's where it is. And it's a bit confusing because at first I thought this was the output, so you would dial up the depth of the modulation and send it to VCO1, but this is actually the input or the source of the modulation. What that means is, as far as I understand it, the modulation, when you dial this up, it brings more of VCO1 in to VCO2. And likewise, if you look at this over here, which you can't see either, but I'm going to tell you, it's the same thing. So there's VCO2 in both of the envelopes. So you can select to modulate based on that. And that is the source. So I've got them both just now set to each other, but they're all the way down. So there won't be any modulation at first, and then we'll bring it in. I thought that was accidentally going to play Mary Had a Little Lamb, but thankfully it didn't. We'll see if I get a DMCA takedown for that. Right, so here's our basic sequence. Fine. Just to give you an idea of what the oscillators sound like. I'll take it all down, actually. Here's VCO2 coming up. That's the sub. Square wave. And then... Bringing in VCO1. Anyway, may not be perfectly in tune, but you get the idea. So, what I'm going to do just now is um, bring up the depth of the modulation. Sorry, that's the filter. Uh, bring up the depth of the modulation from the VCO1 into VCO2, and you'll hear the timbre change. And obviously the pitch changes because of how FM works. Get pretty cool sounds. Obviously you can adjust the pitch. Get that kind of metallic-y sound. So if I turn that down, obviously I have to tune again. Uh, and I'll do the same thing, but for VCO1, so I'm going to modulate it with VCO2. Increase the pulse width. And that's a pretty cool sound. I wonder if we go down an octave. Okay, maybe we won't, we won't go down an octave just now, because I'll have to tune up. You can hear that's pretty cool. Sounds good. What I like about this is you get such a good range of sounds. 
So we're on the one of the envelopes, which is just attack and release, but if we go to the more complicated envelope, you'll maybe hear things a bit better. That sounds pretty nice. And if you sync them, you obviously get that kind of sinky sound. That's mode A, mode B. That kind of metallic -y brash edge. Going back to off, so no sync. What I'm going to do is modulate uh, VCO2 with VCO1 at the same time as modulating VCO1 with VCO2. So I'll increase that just now and you should hear the change, hopefully. I keep going to change the filter instead of changing VCO2 just because of where my face is and the mic and all that. But anyway, I'm going to modulate VCO2 with VCO1 now. You can see how doing this gives you a really interesting range of sounds. The other cool thing about the modulation options in this are that you can modulate with the patch bay. So if I take a, whoop, if I take the output of Another oscillator, I'm going to pick a random one from a Eurorack, which you can't see. This is a Dixie, I think this is a square wave, maybe? Uh, and I'll patch it in. I'll start my sequence again and I'll set it up so that it sounds a bit normal first. Okay, so there's no cross modulation going on or anything like that just now, no FM, but I'm going to uh, patch into, uh, where is it? VCO2's CV. You can hear I've got the FM. And then if I add in VCO1 as well. And then add in VCO2. Then I'm going to switch to a different oscillator on the Dixie. Anyway, you get the idea. With the patch bay, you can basically modulate in a whole bunch of different ways. And actually, that's one of the things that I found quite confusing about this in particular. Because there's so many different options for modulation, it's not quite as obvious how everything fits together, and it takes a wee bit of time to figure that out. Of course, it may not take you that long if you're not like me and not an idiot. The other sound I wanted to show you in this, though, which I think this is particularly good at, is that kind of... Uh, square wave arcade style sound which is so often called chip tune but you know as a chip musician myself I kind of reject that and I don't want to call everything chip tune just because it's a square wave <laughs>
I'm going to play a sequence and basically dial in or modulate VCO1 with a square wave and you set the LFO speed. Chip tune politics aside, it's still a cool sound and something that not many synthesizers can do or at least not many synthesizers can do as easily and as nicely as this in my experience. So I'll play the sequence and then I'm going to modulate VCO1 with a square wave here which is just a selectable button, which is nice. And you'll hear VCO2 continues to play the sequence and VCO1 has the modulation. And so you get the melody, but you also get the kind of square wave A sound, which is pretty cool. So here is the sequence with no modulation. And now what I'll do is modulate, I'll just bring up the depth of the modulation from the square wave. And it's pretty fast now, so I'll drop the LFO down on the bottom here. What I'm not sure about is if you're able to clock this to an external source. I suspect maybe not, but I should have read the manual on that. If I am incorrect, I'll add it down below. It would be really cool to clock this to MIDI, and then you could have it in time with your sequence. Uh, there isn't an obvious patch point that I can see to do that, but perhaps. See, you can hear how that begins to sound really quite cool. We better glide. We'll pitch up. That sounds good. Of course, you're not limited to square wave. It does also have the other sine wave. So you get a vibrato sound. And you can bring the frequency modulation in as well. Next. The other thing that people probably want to know about is the filter and I don't know a whole lot about the filters and I'm not going to pretend to know a whole lot about the filters. Uh, my ears are not um, expert filter ears. However, to me, this filter sounds quite smooth. It's not as aggressive as a lot of other filters that I like, like the Wasp filter, the MS20 filter or like a Polyvox style filter. It's definitely got much smoother um, I don't know, frequency range or frequency cutoff. So even if you dial up the resonance, there's quite a lot of room before you get to the, the point that really things start to squeal and sound aggressive. So I'll run the sequence and play with it and you can see what I mean. Now the cool thing actually about the filler is you can modulate it with VCO1 which gives you some really interesting fizzy sounds like this. That's with the sync on. Resonance coming out.
As you can hear, the kind of most interesting sounds, at least to me, come from using the filter with the modulation from VCO1. As my final thoughts, I had kind of said when I first posted about this that I definitely probably liked the Wasp better because the Wasp has a really nice bass sound and a really nice lead sound, but it can also sound quite aggressive and nasty and you can quite quickly, you know, dial in sounds in the Wasp, whereas with this, it tends to be a bit more idiosyncratic and it takes time to understand the layout, the way the modulations work and, you know, all the rest of it. But it does have some really cool sounds, especially when you get into the modulation. It's just that it takes a bit more time to understand. So it's not as immediate as the Wasp or maybe some other synths, but it has some really cool sounds that you're not necessarily going to get from something else. And even if you can get it from something else, it might be a lot harder to get them. My two or three favourite sounds in this are the arcade style square wave modulation combined with the regular VCO doing its own thing because that gives you quite a cool juxtaposition. I really like the frequency modulation options that gives you some really cool sounds that I kind of have struggled to get on other synths and then finally I really like when you modulate the filter with VCO1 because that gives you some really cool sounds and I didn't have any effects or delay or reverb on that it just all kind of melted into one another quite nicely. If you're thinking of getting this or getting a Behringer monosynth and you're undecided, especially between the Wasp and this, because a lot of people seem to want either this or the Wasp and they're having to choose between the two because they're some of the more interesting ones, then I it's difficult because the Wasp is much more immediate, like I said, but this has got much more in the way of cross-modulation and different options. If you just want a kind of straight up synth and it's your first one maybe, or you know, your only mono synth, then I would probably go for the Wasp because it's easier to use and whilst you may not have as wide a range of sounds, I think you have a wider core range of really usable sounds, as in I can pick up the Wasp and get a lead sound really quickly and really nicely. I can get a bass sound really quickly and really nicely and have a dirty filter sound if I want it. This was would take a bit longer. And whilst I think you can get decent leads and stuff out of it, it's more of a quirky machine than that. So this is probably one for experimenters rather than people who just want a meat and potatoes synth. Is that an expression? Anyway, that's it. I have nothing else to say. I am sure you will have your own thoughts on this. If you've used one of these, feel free to tell me I'm talking mince and it's amazing at Leeds. You just need to know what you're doing. And that's fine. I can accept that. I've had this for a grand total of 40 hours at this point. And I like it. I'm glad I got one. If you do have any patches that are better than what I've done, which is no great shock, please tell me. Tell me. So tell me your secrets. I need your secrets. Oh, actually, one final thing I probably should mention is that early units of this, there were reports and is featured in a bunch of YouTube videos about the frequency modulation, or sorry, the sync was glitchy. And so at certain points, you could see on the waveform that it wasn't perfectly working. It was glitching in a way you wouldn't expect. And whilst I saw people online saying, well, even if they fix it, I'm not going to update mine because that's quite a cool effect. This might be something that bothers you. I haven't noticed it necessarily. I've noticed a wee bit of glitchy behaviour, but I can't tell if that's just the synth and how it's designed or whether it's like an issue and not the way it's meant to be. But it's not impeded my use of this or my interest in it and I don't think it's something I'm all that bothered about. I can't test it unfortunately because my scope's away getting repaired so I can't see the waveform the now but uh, something to be aware if you want a perfect kind of modulation or frequency modulation then maybe you want to investigate that further but for me this is an experimental synth anyway uh, you know it's, it's designed to give kind of harsh weird glitchy sounds so uh, not, not a problem for me. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching and contributing to my eventual YouTube stardom. If you want to leave any comments below, such as Beringer or Immoral and Corrupt, why did you spend your money on this? You have no idea what you're doing. Why did you not read the manual? That is not what that feature does at all. Of course you can get a nice lead sound. 
feel free to tell me and I will ignore, delete and report because this is my channel. <laughs>